Today I want to share with you how to make a gingerbread cake. This is a lovely Christmas recipe and it's adaptable to using both all-purpose flour or whole grain flour and I'll show you how to make it both ways. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I believe that's around 180 degrees Celsius. The next thing you want to do is get a baking dish, any type of baking dish you have, but one that's about 8x8 eight eight or 9x9. Nine nine. And then you want to grease it and flour it well. Now if you want to make this gingerbread with whole grain flour, you're going to want one and a half cups of the whole grain flour of your choice. Now I really like baking with spelt flour. It's an ancient grain and it's in the wheat family, but you can use anything that you like. You can use einkorn, emmer, spelt, uh, you can use traditional whole wheat that you see very commonly at the grocery store. You can also use white whole wheat, which is not all-purpose flour. It's actually a whole grain, a uh, whole wheat flour. It's just uh, from a hybrid, so to speak, of red wheat. Uh, and it's lighter in color, lighter in texture, and lighter in flavor. So any of those wheat flours will work. Now, if you want to just make this with all-purpose flour, you're going to want to have two cups of all-purpose flour. Next, you're going to need a quarter cup of sugar. Now, if you're baking this with all-purpose flour and you want to use white sugar, that's fine. But I'm going to use the whole cane sugar, it's sometimes sold under the name Sucanat. It's just the dried cane juice. I like the dried cane juice because it still has all the minerals and the vitamins in place and none of that's been stripped out. And this works very well when using a whole grain flour or an all-purpose flour. So we'll go ahead and add that right into our flour. Then we're going to need two teaspoons of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Now you can also substitute nutmeg for the allspice if you like that more, but I really prefer the allspice. You're also going to want a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of salt. And this is just a fine ground sea salt. So we'll get all of this into our flour. We'll also add our baking soda and we'll give this a good whisk just to make sure that everything is incorporated and spread well throughout the flour. And I'll have the printable recipe for all of this over on my website, marysnest.com. Next, you're going to want one stick or eight tablespoons or half a cup of melted butter. And to the melted butter, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of molasses. And this is just plain regular molasses. It's not the black strap. Then I'm just going to give this a little whisk to incorporate the butter and the molasses together. Then we're going to go ahead and pour in our butter and molasses mixture right into our flour. And now we're just going to incorporate this molasses butter mixture just enough to moisten the flour. Next we're going to add a quarter of a cup of cold brewed coffee. Now if you don't have this, don't worry, you can use water or if you want, you can make a quarter of a cup of instant coffee uh, with the little coffee granules. But this adds a lovely flavor. Next, you're going to want one cup of buttermilk. Now, don't worry if you don't have buttermilk. You can use one cup of regular milk and just put a little squirt of lemon juice in there to help curdle it. Or you can take some yogurt and thin it with milk to the consistency of buttermilk. Any of those options will work. But the nice thing about using buttermilk or a soured milk or a cultured milk, like if you had diluted the uh, yogurt, is that it gives a wonderful light texture to baked goods. So I highly recommend it. And it's especially helpful whenever you're baking with whole grains. It really helps with the lightness of the end product, of the final baked product. 
And now to your buttered milk or your soured milk or your thinned yogurt milk. We're going to add one egg and that's a large egg. And then we're just going to give this a little stir to incorporate that egg and we'll go ahead and pour this into our gingerbread mixture. And in goes that buttermilk egg mixture. And now I'm just going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, well, maybe a little more. <laughs> I find that adds a nice flavor too. And this is my homemade vanilla extract. Uh, if you want to know how I make this, I'll put a link in the iCards and in the description below. It's very easy to do. Now we're just going to mix this up until we get it into a nice batter and it's going to be a thick batter. Well, we've got everything ready. It's a glorious thick batter. You may see some lumps if you're doing this by hand like I am. Don't worry about it. You can just press them out a little with your spatula, but a few lumps is fine. This is going to come out beautiful. Now we're just going to go ahead and, prepare and, and pour this right into our prepared pan. Now we'll get this into our 350 degree oven. We're going to bake this for between 30 and 35 minutes and you'll know that it's done when you check on it and you see that it's starting to pull away from the sides a little and a toothpick inserted into the middle comes out clean. Well, I just took this out of the oven and it took about 35 minutes and it smells glorious. Now we're going to let this cool in the pan for about 15 minutes and then we're going to take it out and we're going to have some fun decorating it. Well, I let this cool in the baking pan for about 15 minutes. So now we'll take it out and we'll let it cool the rest of the way on a rack. And I've got a nice cake plate here that once it's cooled, we'll put it up here. Uh, this actually belonged to my mom uh, that some of you who are in my age group may remember the green stamps that we used to get when you chop at the grocery store. And my mother would collect the green stamps and then she'd turn them in at the little green stamp store for different things. And this cake plate was one of the things that she picked out and I remember going with her. So it has a nice memory. And then, so I've got the cake plate, I've got a little doily on top and we'll take this out. Hopefully it'll come out perfectly. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. Excellent. Okay. Now we'll just let that cool completely and then we'll decorate it. Alrighty. Well, I let this cool a little more and now I'm going to take my doily, just put it down like that and then wish me luck as we get this onto this cake plate. Boom. Pretty good. <laughs> Thanks to the doily, it allows you to straighten it out easily. Now I've got some different uh, things here that are fun to use at Christmas time. I've got some deer. Uh, I've got some little holly with berries. Uh, I've got some little green trees. And then of course, Santa Claus with his reindeer. So we definitely have to put Santa Claus on and he'll, we'll put him just like this, maybe right to one side there. And then maybe I'll put some little trees and it's funny, nothing's to scale. These trees are a little small. I don't, I think I'll hold off and save these for cupcakes or something. These deer are a little big in comparison to the trees, but I like to put the trees on. I always think they look cute. And so I'll just get some of these around and then we'll dust the whole thing with powdered sugar. Well, I've got a few trees on there. Maybe I'll put some little holly in the front here. I think that'll look very cute and colorful. And I have to tell you that uh, this little uh, Santa Claus with the reindeer always has special memories to me because my son used to love to take this and put it on the roof of the manger in the nativity scene. So that was always very cute that Santa was there at the nativity. Now we'll dust everything with powdered sugar because even though I live in central Texas, it wouldn't be Christmas without a little snow on the gingerbread. Well, look at this charming little winter wonderland. Well, I think all your family and friends will enjoy this. And I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy, and blessed New Year. And if you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, consider subscribing to my channel and then click on this video over here where I have a playlist of some more Christmas recipes. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.